what's going on guys, my name is Gameslinks and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. Hey guys, so just before the video begins, now I would normally complain that people are viewing this series without being subscribed, but uh, most YouTubers' analytics look like this, and mine look like this. Basically YouTube doesn't recommend my videos to anyone new at all, so if you are new to the channel it would be absolutely amazing if you could share this video on Twitter or subscribe so more people can see my work. Thank you. Today we are sending up a grabber to actually get the rovers from the station and bring them down to the various moons. Now this rocket is pretty, pretty heavy, you know, there's a, quite a large payload in here because we've got to send a couple of landers up to the station which is currently around Ash, if you've not seen that episode feel free to uh, to check it out. So it's not quite asparagus staged, I, I believe the term is onion staging, I, I genuinely don't know, it's been a while since I actually played, that's like a career mode sort of thing, so my staging's a little bit off, but um, yes, we are ditching that stage already and what a clean separation that was. I'm actually quite quite a fan of this rocket's, uh, this rocket's lifter stage, and also Ah, I, I've been working on the visual suite in Beyond Home, just trying to get it up to par with some of the other mods out there, like a, a proper visual mod this time. But yes, you'll notice that Road has thicker clouds uh, from the, the layer volume as well as the clouds from space as well, so hopefully, hopefully they're good. But uh, yes, inside this payload here we have some, we have three different landers that will hopefully land each rover on each moon. Now, the thing that I've just realised, I well, uh, I didn't account for the weight of the rover, which means that the lander for Ash might underperform a little bit. The lander for Lua doesn't have any parachutes, and here they are, they're quite small stage landers. They're nothing special, but hopefully they'll do the job. This rocket is struggling a fair bit. My gravity term is not great, but yeah, it's it's a heavy rocket, and I don't think the parts that I have currently unlocked are quite up to par to do it. I was trying to save a lot of a lot of money doing this as well. From last time, I've actually optimised the monopropellant, so I've, each of these landers has one monopropellant tank, and each of these landers has eight thrusters, so hopefully all of that combined should allow me to dock with the station, without the problems from last time, <laughs> because I know RPS oh, yes, was a massive issue in the last episode. And it's time for stage separation. For some reason I've got two decouplers here, I'm not quite sure why, but <laughs> there we go. And our circularization is almost complete. So the maneuver of Ash has been set up. Now I'm not too sure which way around the station is currently orbiting, it should be going this way. Uh, oh, I just forgot, you can't see my mouse cursor. I don't know why, you, you just can't see where my mouse is. It should be going, yeah, it's going around the way that I thought. There we go, there's Road with its thicker clouds. Now some people might be opposed to this change, but I really like it. And it's like, well, <laughs> It's my mod, so your opinion is invalid. <laughs> oh god, I'm sorry. Anyway, so the maneuver there, I'm not sure how this orbit's going to pan out, but we've we've reached uh, the encounter with Ash, so hopefully we can dock with the station and all will be fine. I've done a little bit more auto strutting on it um, since last time, and I and I corrected its orbit as well. Separation is 61 kilometers. There we go. It would help if I pointed the right way. Isn't there a better way to do manoeuvres as well? I've never used it- oh my god. <laughs> I've never used it this way before. Um, this is entirely new- what? Okay, no, we're never using that again, okay. <laughs> 1.8, more like, oh god. And yes, I am referring to delta V as a unit of measurement. I don't know why, it's just become a habit. I understand that it is the maximum change in velocity that my craft is capable of, so it would be better for me to say fuel, but <laughs> said it this way for years, so unfortunately it's it's here to stay. Separation of 54, they're not really aligned there, but I'm going to go to the descending node and just go send. It seems like the easiest thing to do. So, I need to take a rover down to Ash. Now, the one, the one that I take down in this episode, I might send it over to Armstrong rather than Ash, which is a fair amount of Delta V to use, but uh, it doesn't take much to land on Armstrong. It really doesn't, like 300? from intercept to land, I think. It depends what your relative speed is. It's just like rendezvous with an asteroid, to be honest. Oh, I think that's gonna be pretty good. We're gonna rendezvous with the station, it's gonna blow up just like before, and it'll be fine, I'll just quick load. I should probably quick save now, whilst I'm out of physics range, so if I do end up messing this up, it's not too bad. Yeah, yeah, we're in physics range now. <laughs> My frame rate took a little bit of a drop. I don't know, okay, we're all right. Doesn't look like it's exploding. So I'll quick save before it tries to. Oh no, it's it's starting the thing. 
Ah, uh, time warp just... See, look, it's just, it's wibble wobbling. It's fine, I'll just quick save, and I'll just quick load after it explodes. Of course, now it's not exploding. And it will when I get so close to docking, and I'll have to reload this one. Oh. Right, so I'm just going to leave this here. I'm going to completely kill my velocity with, this, with the target. Uh, like so. Take some time. It'll, it'll work. There we go. And now we just do this. Boom. Velocity has been killed. <laughs> well, let's get him out. The station's going to be unmanned for a little while, but because it's got a probe core, it should be all right. Um, yeah. Now then, there's a road in the distance. It's very, very nice looking. I do like this station, you know. I spent an awful lot of time. I've spent about three hours designing this. I have all all of the segments lined up. I designed them all beforehand. Um, some of them use parts that I don't yet have unlocked, which is why the main focus at the moment in this series is to actually um, to unlock those parts and build the station. It gives us like a common goal. Um, now then, I need to enter one of these command seats, which should be around there. There it is. All I've got to do is board it. Boop. All right. Cool. I'm in the command seat, which I've got to do it here, don't I? So hopefully, no explosions. And it looks like it's free. Incredible. I didn't expect it to go so smoothly. But we do have RCS, right, but it's only on the bottom, which means I'm going to have to duck the lander to this. Which is good, because I want to preserve monopropellant. It should prioritise the rover, so when I land, I'm going to move whatever monopropellant I've got left into the rover. So now what I need to do is I need to match the velocity of the lambda with this. Actually, to be fair, I don't need the crew in the rover, the one there, because this man, this handsome fellow, is the one who's actually going to be landing. Ah well, well, we'll decouple this node, like so. I think we have electric charge, we have everything we need. Very nice, we have solar panels, we've got the whole lot. Now then, that's our target, we need to dock with that set you as the target. I could just point to the target, it's fine. So I'll point to that and kill the velocity like so. Now the problem is now it's a moving target. See, if they both face each other, there is no angle between them. The problem is both of them are moving. Oh yeah, we've got to decouple that. <laughs> Jesus, that was violent. <laughs> that like legit propelled me forwards. And all we got to do is dock. I've just realised I've lost the target indicator, which is kind of hindering me a little bit, but that looks like we have a lock, and we're docked. Very nice. Oh, yes, off. What I'm going to do is I'm going to transfer everything from this tank into the monopropellant tanks on here, so I need to just go out. So those only hold 20, which means I have spare, so if I do have the Delta V to come up from Armstrong, I'll be fine. But look, 4,244 meters per second, I think so. Undock, there it is. And now the next one will dock. <laughs> the thing is, if you get all of them, see, they, they're not docked, I don't think. Oh no, I think, yeah, I think we're free. Yeah, we are, we're free. There's no more lock on this. Now, um, this stage, I should have put a probe core on, to be honest. Uh, but I'm gonna have to push it out of the way with the other one. <laughs> But yeah, if you are new to the channel, or Kerbal Space Program in general, this is uh, probably not the guide to be watching for docking, but I'm doing a hell of a lot of it anyway. And hopefully this helps a little bit. There's the rover just chilling over there. Just a little bit of station management, don't worry. Just replacing that engine segment with this engine segment. <laughs> Alright, so I need to set that one, no, this one, as the target, because that's the primary one. There we go. Again, not quite, but a couple of adjustments. We'll get it pretty much spot on. I, I say pretty much, it has to be completely parallel for the dock to actually work, which is really annoying. But the magnets are really useful. And there we go, we're docked. Now the station is muck big. So, whilst we send this rover down to Armstrong, um, these will stay for the moment. <laughs> the problem is, if I undock this, I've got to undock it twice, then I've got to move that one up. It's going to be a pain, but it's the only way that I could do it at the moment. And it's time. 
to make a move for Armstrong. Now getting an encounter with Armstrong is going to be a pain in the arse. That is, that is mighty cool. You know what? That almost got me an encounter. You know what, I'll do that because that's a really sensitive manoeuvre and I'll sort it out a little bit later. But yeah, there's our manoeuvre for Armstrong. Here we go. Executing the burn. And there's Ash. Yes, in Beyond Hope 1.3 there is a whole lot of stuff coming coming up. If you've seen the trailers, cool. I'm not going to go too much into it because obviously there are trailers on my channel um, that you can go and watch. Which, if I am paying attention, they should be linked somewhere in the end screen of this video. So at, right at the end of the video, I'll link them. Um, but yes, Ash is getting a little bit of an overhaul, well not, not really an overhaul, but a facelift. Uh, mainly because th there were like orange bits, again you can't see my cursor because, I don't know, shadow plays being annoying. But uh, but yeah, there were some, there were some like pink slash orange bits where the land was meant to be uh, heated up, but it looked horrible when you actually landed there, so I'm glad that I've fixed that and made that all better. Here we go, we are in orbit of Armstrong now, and yes, oh, we need to pick our landing spot because this is going to be ooh, difficult, difficult, lemon difficult, especially to get the landing spot right. It's one thing to land on a planet, and it's another thing to actually land in the right place. Yeah, we'll slow that down a little more. There we go, if we land around there, we should be, we should be grand, you know. <laughs> but yes. This is going to do a lot of science. We don't have a scientist on board, which would have made sense. But, um, I, yeah, it costs a fair bit to hire a scientist. Anyway, but now you can see the new terrain textures loading in. Very nice. Please don't land me on one of those mountains. Would be mildly preferable. Uh, but yeah, so our orbit is 115. I really do need to slow down because the thrust rate ratio is bad with this. Anyway, there we go, one of the new terrain features. Whether they're bones or not, that, who knows? Doing crew reports and stuff. Doing surface experiments and all those cool things near these. We'll tell you a little bit about them. you, you just got to be in the biome. You don't actually have to be near them. But uh, I've not implemented them yet, and especially not for the episode either. Because that would be spoilery, wouldn't it? Just giving you a couple of hints. I'll put the landing gear down. It's not, mm, it's not really necessary. Especially on a moon like Armstrong, which is pretty much a big asteroid. And there we go, yeah. <laughs> I, I've really upped my terrain scatter game in uh, in this version of Beyond Home. I'm really happy with it. I'm really happy with how they've turned out. And I'm really happy with the trailers as well. But yeah, here we go. We're about to land at <laughs> the majestic speed of 2 meters per second. Oh, what a nice landing. Now then, I can use the RCS on board this rover, and let's close that actually. I can use the RCS on this rover to um, to actually exit, or to undock from this safely. The problem is, um, yeah, doing this on Ash isn't going to be fun. <laughs> I don't know how we're going to do this on Ash, especially since the, the thrust weight ratio might be just over 1, it might be just over just under, I don't know. So it's gonna be it's gonna be hard, um, but it'll be fine, you know. I don't know. I mean, I could just tilt the rover over, to be honest, like that, and land it like that. But I don't think that's a brilliant idea. I'm gonna actually just undock it because I want this lander to either stay here as an emergency in case people get stranded, or to come back, you know, uh, to to return the science experiments. We can always send one of these lovely people back. So I might just leave one of them on on Armstrong for a little bit. But uh, let's just hope this doesn't fling me into the air. It didn't. I wasn't expecting that. I was expecting to be flung into the air. Now there's no. Con oh, that's the decoup. Would that be one? Right. Now then, I'm going to use the RCS very sparingly. And yes, they are all downward facing for this very moment. Although this wouldn't work quite so well on Ash. It works on Armstrong, and that's what matters. There we go. Rover number one has been deployed. And we have we have a fair amount of monocrop left, in case we need to dock again, but there's not much point. Let's extend this, it will... It will act as a relay, as a sort, but it depends where on the planet it is. 
at that time. But yeah, let's do a couple of experiments. Um, I am able to store them all here, so that should collect the EVA report. Uh, I've already done the science down here, I'm pretty sure, on this flat. I haven't? Very nice. It's perfect. I've not done science down here for some time. Now, I'm going to have to send a scientist to uh, to sit in this command seat. I'll send the pilot back at some point, and all shall be swell. But yes, I love Armstrong now. It's got some fog, which you might be able to see. Uh, YouTube's encoding might make it pretty pretty hard to see, but there is some fog. I'll try and find... There we go. That's, that should be pretty, pretty visible now. Yeah, there's some fog. The terrain scatters are much better textured. I've learned how to UV map a little bit better than before now. 45 science, don't mind if I do. Now, I'm not sure whether to transmit this back or not. Because recovering it kind of defeats the play. You know what, I will transmit it. Because I need to unlock some more scientific stuff. Um, unless this somehow lands back on the road, which it can't. Or I could send it back up for processing in the mobile processing lab on the station, which I don't think we have one yet. It's one of the segments that I plan on sending up, but we don't have it yet. So I think I'll just transmit this one back. And um, yeah, I think, that's, I think that's a pretty safe thing to do. I should be able to do that as well. I have the electric charge, I have quite a fair bit. I have a connection. Transmit. <laughs> yeah, I, sh I should have enough electric charge to transmit them all in one. Uh, I do have a fairly big, thick solar panel on the front. <laughs> oh, it's done! We've just enough science to spare. Uh, just enough charge to spare. And it's going up by five per second, so like, there's no rush. But yeah, there we go. Now we'll go back to the track into not track station, the space center, and we'll see what else we can do from there. So from that rover we got a total of 82 signs, which isn't quite enough to advance very far. Uh, we can, can't even get the miniaturization yet, but since it's a rover we're going to be going on a couple of trips. We're going to drive around Armstrong a little bit and uh, unlock some of these nodes hopefully, as well as the ones on Lua and Ash. But anyway, that's it from me. If you liked that video, please remember to leave a like and subscribe and consider sharing it because that is how the channel is growing at the moment. Um, so thank you for watching. If you enjoyed that, like and subscribe, and I'll see you all in the next episode.